Signore e Signori, e benvenuti. Buongiorno, mesdames et messieurs, et bienvenue. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren, und herzlich willkommen. Viele Menschen, die mir regalen, die waren auch gut. Buenos dias, Signores e Signores, e bienvenidos. Yes, all the languages we speak because we love each other, we want to share the knowledge. In the most beautiful language in the world, one sentence. I hope you understand. Dobro jutro i dobrodošli u Split. Dobrodošli u Hrvatsku. It was not bad talking, just Croatian to greet you and to welcome you in the beautiful town of Split to the Faculty of Economics, Business and Tourism for the 11th edition of what we call The Wire. Yes, Week of Innovative Regions in Europe. And the title is, believe it or not, The Future of Resilient Regions in the New Era. My name is Frano, and I think you were with me yesterday, if I remember good, because you were answering all the questions. And today is the day we've all been waiting for. We have to open this properly, and I can't wait to introduce you all the lovely gentlemen and ladies who are with us today, and of course, great speakers for the parallel sessions that will be happening during the day. Hmm, what will we be talking about? I told you yesterday, a little bit of quality of governance, heritage and innovation, and brand circulation. But nothing of this would happen if there wasn't a grand support of the European Commission Directorate General of Research and Innovation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, in all the languages of the European Union, of course. We would like to greet and thank all the representatives of the Ministry of Science and Education, who also help us, and, of course, never the least, Split Dalmatia County and City of Split. I hope you're ready, because now I have to greet all lovely persons in the first row. Ah, yeah, it used to be that way. Now it's online combined. And I greet, firstly, another one, folks, Minister of Science and Education of the Republic of Croatia. Then, Jean-Éric Paquet, Director General for the Research and Innovation of the European Commission. Bon matin, monsieur. Blazenko Boban, Prefect of the Split Dalmatia County. Dravi bili, Župane. Andro Krstorlovic Opara, Mayor of the City of Split. Eva la, kako bi rekli skračeno. S nama je i Rektor of the University of Split, Mr. Dragan Ljutic. And, of course, our dear host, Dean of the Faculty of Economics, Business and Tourism for Split, Maja Fredotovic. <sighs> Greetings were opened now. What do we have? Opening speeches. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are ready, it is time for us to meet and greet uh, the minister who will be speaking first. Mr. Radovan Fox, Minister of Science and Education of Republic of Croatia, prepared a special welcome greeting. Hello, it's me you're looking for. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us. These brave people did everything to be back online for you, and we now can roll on. And the best start we wanted to give you and to offer so you could be completely in the split Dalmatia mood is a special video we prepared just for you. This is what it looks like when you come live to split Dalmatia County.
Good morning one more time to all of you. Thanks for being with us on another official Slido app and entry or chat. Good morning, Katowice. Good morning, Vilnius. Good morning, Croatia. Good morning, Calabria. Nice to see you all wrap up and ready for the opening. It's my pleasure to greet, they say better twice than none, these lovely gentlemen and ladies who will be talking in front of you. We start with a greeting to the Radovan Fuchs, Minister of Science and Education of Republic of Croatia. Monsieur Jean-Éric Paquet, Director General for the Research and Innovation of the European Commission. Blazenko Boban, Prefect of the Split Amesha County, and Andro Kristolovic Opera, the Major of the City of Split. Because it's a great time to start something with opening speech, we now call Mr. Adon Fuchs, our Minister, to greet you and welcome you. Mr. Fuchs, it's your Dear Director uh, General Jean Eric uh, Paquet, dear Major of Split, uh, Mr. Opera, Rector of the University of Split, uh, uh, Professor Dragan Jutic, dear Dean of the Faculty of Economics, Business and Tourism, Professor Maya Fredotovic, and uh, Prefect of the Split Dalmatian County, Mr. Bowen. Dear uh, participants, dear ladies and gentlemen, it's my really uh, uh, honor and privilege to have the opportunity to greet you on the occasion of the opening of WIRE conference. Uh, first of all, uh, allow me to thank the organizers, uh, University of Split, for the invitation and for working very hard to make this conference possible, despite of the obstacles that we face and that we all uh, know very well. As you know, the WIRE conference uh, was uh, planned to take place in April this year during the Croatian presidency uh, on the, uh, of the Council of the EU, and it was one of the main events. Uh, due to the well-known reasons, it was postponed and the finally transformed into the online event uh, uh, that we are um, participating today. Due to uh, the well, uh, I'm actually uh, happy that today we have uh, such distinguished guests uh, here with us and they represent the most important stakeholders in the system of research and innovation. As we all know, research and innovation are the critical for fostering creation of the uh, competitive societies. With that in mind, this conference has become even more important, given uh, that the research uh, and innovation have a pivotal role in the uh, recovery from this uh, unfortunate COVID-19 situation. Uh, given the rapid scientific and technological changes, identifying, developing and uh, leveling scientific and technological innovation provides a competitive uh, advantage. Uh, talent is a uh, um, key factor in supportive uh, innovation ecosystem. Talented researchers uh, are the key for uh, having more developers with a positive correlation to the number of uh, startup uh, uh, companies. However, Without uh, adequate mobility of researchers, businesses and uh, individuals would not receive the full uh, benefits of uh, their innovations and would fo uh, focus less on the research and development in general. Therefore, it's uh, critical to reduce the gap between high and low performing countries in terms of uh, attractiveness for researchers and providing a better business and uh, uh, environment for uh, high-tech innovation, innovative and distinguished uh, companies in uh, uh, performing uh, uh, countries. I believe that uh, any existing artificial uh, DUI and uh, barriers should be removed to explore its full capacity of the European uh, combined uh, brain power with the positive split over the national policy and investment context. Uh, our ministry, the Ministry of Science and Education, in cooperation with a number of stakeholders in the system of science and education, actively promotes and uh, develops uh, awareness of importance of research and innovation 
and the dose also contributes to the promotion of the same. Through its participation in, uh, in, in institutional activities, providing principal support and the sponsorship to uh, thematic conferences, uh, exhibitions and fairs, uh, ensuring financial and other forms of cooperation, we actively support and encourage innovation and uh, technological uh, creativity. The long-term uh, intention of the Ministry of Science and Education is to continuously encourage the process of uh, building the Republic of Croatia as a country uh, focused on knowledge, research and innovation. Our ultimate goal is increasing competitiveness, productivity and employment and accordingly achieve the stable and sustainable economic and social growth. We are therefore happy to see that those issues occupy an important place in the recent European Commission communication on the new European research area and that new in initiatives have been announced as potential useful tool to improve the uh, conditions for uh, mobile uh, researchers. Let this event be an inspi uh, inspiration and an in incentive to the exchange of a new knowledge and experience, but also an incentive for an even stronger promotion of research and innovation, especially among the young people. With this in mind, I want to thank all the expert participants and uh, all those which are, will benefit from uh, the discussions and the conclusions uh, which will be gained from uh, this conference in the next uh, uh, two days. Thank you very much and I wish you all the best. We thank you, Minister of Science and Education of the Republic of Croatia, Mr. Fox, for being with us this morning and saying some lovely words. Now it is time for us to hear what our dear Director General for the Research and Innovation of the European Commission has to say. Bon matin, Jean. Eric, comment ça va? Très bien, merci beaucoup. Uh, Good merci morning. à vous. And now we're going to speak in English. You have your time, and I'm looking forward to what you have to say to all the participants that are already waiting. Well, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I must say the video of Split was absolutely lovely, um, and I'm utterly um, uh, frustrated not to be joining um, the WIA conference as planned um, in Split. Um, Croatia is, is a member state which uh, I know very well, but one of the few places in Split, and I was very much looking forward to it. But I'm happy to be with all of you today, virtually at least, and I'm sure there will be other opportunities. This 11th um, week of uh, innovative regions in Europe is um, uh, taking place at a very relevant moment. Uh, on the one hand, we are finalizing the preparations for Horizon Europe, um, and the Commission recently adopted um, its communication on the future of the European research area, uh, which you will discuss from the point of view of regions during um, uh, this conference. Regions have, uh, in Europe, uh, increasingly played a key role to promote um, innovation, to establishing across all member states powerful innovation uh, ecosystems. And uh, the European research area uh, process and Horizon Europe as a program, of course, wants to build on these strengths uh, and uh, help regions where relevant, bringing it to the next level. And I think uh, having the conference um, as a Croatian presidency event uh, uh, now in split is a very good choice because um, Croatia has, in the last uh, uh, months and years, continued to uh, invest and improve uh, its research and innovation system. And you have, including in split, uh, vibrant um, innovation uh, ecosystem. So I'm really delighted uh, to be in Croatia for this year's um, uh, conference. Now, uh, on uh, Horizon Europe, um, we are uh, nearly there, as I think um, uh, you all uh, uh, know, uh, following the uh, discussions between our leaders and the European Parliament, ministers and the European Parliament. 
we very much um, hope and I would even say that I expect uh, to have an agreement on the future European budget now shortly and that this will then um, allow um, uh, ministers of research um, and development and innovation and the European Parliament with the Commission to finalize in trilogue the preparations of Horizon Europe. We had the benefit of a broad early agreement um, uh, on the future setup of Horizon Europe. So what is uh, still to be done is, of course, the budget itself and uh, the budget uh, distribution. But the uh, architecture of the program, the main priorities were agreed already uh, now a bit more than a year ago. And this has allowed um, everyone to uh, start preparing for the program delivery and we have done a, a major exercise which um, we want to to call a co-creation exercise to beyond the uh, legal boundaries of the program to define the priorities for implementation uh, ensuring that the program is being um, prepared in close connection with um, other funding and investment instruments across the EU budget and at national level, but also ensuring that the program is also connected to Europe's policy priorities. Obviously, uh, the response to the pandemic was um, supported still under Horizon 2020, but our pandemic preparedness um, and possibly further investments um, to um, uh, fight the pandemic um, will uh, of course also be connected to the uh, future program. So that effort of co-creation was done with uh, all actors in Europe, including European regions, because European regions are, are in, 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 in the real world uh, where research and innovation is taking place in our research organizations, in our universities, as is the case uh, uh, director dear dean here in the university um, of split and of course also uh, across our industries research and innovation is also then picked up uh, by our societies by our citizens and so place-based um, research and innovation is of course um, a key feature of europe's research and innovation system and this is where uh, regions we believe um, have a very key role to play that applies uh, uh, across um, the European research and innovation, but now for Horizon Europe, maybe two more specific um, elements of interest. The first one is the um, increasing attention and resources which we intend to put on innovation ecosystems, particularly um, place-based innovation ecosystems, where Europe invested um, in the last decade um, across um, uh, across its all its member states and in in all regions, largely with um, resources is also coming from the European level through the policy uh, instruments and on the basis of uh, specialization strategies which were followed uh, very actively um, across the Union. And what I observe is that where these smart specialization strategies were really uh, uh, pushed um, and, and, um, and, and, and deepened and where then the uh, responsible actors of uh, research and innovation at national and local level have really used these smart specialization frameworks to prioritize and to build on their strengths is where uh, you see um, very good uh, results in all 27 uh, member states. So we want to build on that and in particular we want to propose um, around uh, one of the novelties of Horizon Europe which is the European Innovation Council. We want to propose uh, to put up um, a platform and there will also be a, a program which uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with, a platform to allow these um, regional, national, local, industry-based, university-based um, uh, in terms to come into a dialogue and to ensure that uh, on the one hand of course uh, these um, actors can can learn from each other but also that uh, innovators can see that uh, once they have been nurtured in a, in a specific ecosystem the place where they can go and scale up is uh, of course the the internal market the european union and um, the best way we we believe to give that perspective 
is to promote um, uh, this broader view of uh, innovation ecosystems growing from place-based innovation uh, across the European Union. So there will be a bit fo big focus put on regional innovation uh, and uh, ecosystems as we prepare the innovation part of uh, uh, Horizon Europe. Uh, allowing us to build on uh, what has been uh, constructed in the last decade, which, by the way, also allows um, very, very many startups to emerge uh, every day, every year, and across the European Union, including um, uh, at region level here in Split and, and in Croatia and everywhere, we are in Europe creating more startups than anyone else. Uh, more startups are created every year in the European Union, more than in the US, for example. This is an, an untold success of regional um, innovation ecosystems, which I wanted to highlight. A second important aspect of uh, Horizon Europe is uh, the Horizon Europe missions. Uh, I'm sure you, you are also familiar with that uh, new um, effort. The idea of these missions in five areas, fight against cancer, uh, clean uh, oceans and water system, very relevant um, uh, here in Split, um, clean uh, uh, cities, clean and climate neutral cities, climate adaptation and restoring soil health. These five Horizon Europe missions are in preparation. Uh, we had the opportunity uh, with the five mission boards to work across the European Union, including by engaging um, at local level uh, with uh, local authorities and with citizens uh, to prepare uh, the um, rollout of these missions. So there will be an important feature of um, Horizon Europe. And if you look at the five areas, um, clean cities, the, the objective or the ambition which the mission board recommends is that we um, 100 European cities which um, declare their ambition to be climate neutral by 2030. I mean, this would be a, a substantial contribution to uh, Europe's CO2 reduction agenda. Minus 55% by 2030 is the Commission proposal. Climate neutrality by 2050, of course. But having these 100 cities under the city's mission would in itself be a will certainly also help many, many more cities engage on that necessary transformation agenda. And so uh, by construction, uh, these um, cities mission is a local uh, effort supported in a national system, supported by European um, instruments, uh, but where uh, regions and cities in these regions will, of course, be the, the, the cent central part of um, the uh, delivery of that specific mission. I think um, something very similar can be uh, argued for the climate adaptation mission. What the climate adaptation mission board recommends is that across the European Union, uh, at region level particularly, we work on um, showcasing, developing uh, pilot projects, nature restoration, for example, which would allow our regions to become more climate resilient uh, dealing with extreme uh, weather events, uh, forest fires, um, uh, drought and hydric stress. These are all uh, developments which are happening today and we need to invest uh, collectively in making uh, Europe more resilient to the change which is um, happening, obviously, whilst uh, ensuring that we also uh, limit the uh, emission of uh, CO2 and uh, combining that effort uh, to work also on biodiversity and environmental impacts. So these uh, uh, missions in Horizon Europe are now uh, being established and I very much uh, expect and, and must say very, we very much look forward to work with European regions to make them a reality as we move uh, forward. So a lot happening in, um, in, in Horizon Europe uh, which uh, will uh, allow us to continue to work closely with all of you. And um, I'm sure that during this uh, wire, this 11th wire conference, you will uh, be bringing forward additional ideas and contributions to make Horizon Europe uh, a success in its uh, delivery. Now, the second main uh, development is uh, indeed, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to see that this is the, the, the focus of the 11th uh, wire. Uh, the second main development is um, the uh, political ambition 
of uh, EU member states and the European Commission of Commissioner Maria Gabriel and um, her, 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 peers, um, her peers in the Research Council to revisit, re-energize, reinvent to an extent also uh, the European research area. Europe needs to uh, invest in research and innovation. Uh, we need to do more in research and innovation. We need also to ensure that we work in a much more uh, integrated manner in, in bringing together our research and innovation efforts and outcomes with a clear um, intention to uh, allow Europe uh, to drive its uh, green and uh, digital transformation on the one hand, but also in the present circumstances, um, this research and innovation effort across Europe in the European research area will be a nice solution for Europe's recovery and for the capacity of Europe to build more resilient uh, societies and um, a better functioning economy, again, against the need to transform into a green and uh, digital uh, um, society. This uh, needs to be done uh, by pooling together the outcomes of research and innovation everywhere, from the local to the national, European and global level. There are many interconnected uh, levels in that effort. And uh, the European research area ambition of the Commission is about saying that Yes, we have invested uh, well and um, effectively over the last 20 years. The European research area is amazing infrastructures. The European research area is a very mobile uh, uh, research um, uh, place. Um, our researchers are traveling across Europe on a, on a, on a constant basis. We, of course, have a, a challenge on what the Croatian presidency labeled brain circulation, which is not always entirely balanced. So we need to look into that. And that's also part of the European research area um, uh, reset, um, uh, if you want. But with these achievements, uh, we also are clearly still uh, at a point where we need to develop, firstly, powerful research and innovation systems at local and national level. All member states need to continue to invest um, into research and innovation systems which deliver excellence and which deliver excellent knowledge and excellent solutions to drive these transformations. So building 27 national systems which are impactful and then at the same time increasingly try to connect uh, the research outcomes uh, of course with um, a, a lot of, uh, of national um, uh, developments which uh, need to be, uh, to, be, to be nurtured and our diversity also strengths for Europe. We don't need a European research and innovation system. We need one European dimension which allows national uh, research and innovation outcomes to be connected uh, so that diversity is um, an obvious uh, strength in Europe. But we also need um, synergy and critical mass in many areas and that is also what uh, the European research area is um, all about. So in a nutshell, this is about um, going back on uh, prioritizing investment and reform in research and innovation. So improving, uh, as I said, the access to excellence by helping all 27 member states continue to invest and reform their research and innovation systems, translating the research and innovation results into the economy and society, and then lastly, deepening this European research and uh, innovation space. So there will be uh, many initiatives. We have a roadmap of 14 actions, and I'm not going to go through them uh, here and now, uh, but I think important to say that um, uh, across these um, actions and uh, across this ambition, we see the regions of Europe being major players um, for innovation, for missions, but then more generally, major players in driving Europe's research and innovation future, in ensuring that we experiment um, and innovate in society. I think you are the, the right level to connect um, with uh, our societies and our citizens, which need to be increasingly part of setting the research and innovation agenda. I think this is um, a, an extremely important um, future uh, vision because we will need technology, we will need changes in our societies for 
our green and digital transformation. But that cannot come just from technology or out of labs or industry. This needs to be tested and carried by uh, society and citizens. So we need citizens to help us set the agenda help us set priorities. And I think that the interaction uh, between research and, uh, and between artists, researchers and innovators and society is very well um, happening uh, and we're very well placed at the uh, region level. In this context, we will, um, of course, have a number of instruments. And I finish that we know the, um, the exchange platform uh, where many European regions are connecting together. This is a common effort with the Committee of the Regions. We'll come back to it uh, in the panel, I, I'm sure, in a moment uh, uh, with the Committee of the Region. So here we want to continue to invest um, into that uh, uh, platform. And we then uh, want also to ensure that um, in our a European Research Area Hubs Policy Initiative, which is where we want to promote a place-based innovation. Regions help us design the right approach. And together with my uh, colleagues in DG Regional Policy of the Commission, uh, we will work um, in uh, delivering uh, on regional policy ambitions and objectives uh, jointly with uh, research and innovation and the European research area ambition to help uh, regions uh, ramp up, uh, continue to reform and increase their investment, and with that become key players of Europe's ambition to uh, transform and, and lead uh, in science, research and innovation around this green digital transformation. So many expectations, I think, uh, many developments uh, which were in the making in the last couple of years, which, which are now coming together. And I hope that during the uh, WIRE conference, there will be a lot of uh, feedback and input from all of you, uh, helping us to um, finalize our work and then jointly start to implement that path into the future. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Merci beaucoup pour tout, especially for the, all the support you gave us in organization of this throughout the Director General for Research and Innovation. Uh, our att attendees online said that you had a great lecture, Mr. Jean-Éric, and I'm uh, looking forward to the roundtable, which will happen in about uh, half an hour, where we'll be talking a little bit more. And now we have some greetings from Tunisia, Slovakia, Poland, and many other countries. Hello to everybody. We carry on with the official opening. Now it's time for the speech of the Prefect of the Spil Dalmatia County, Mr. Blazenko Boban, who will be addressing you in Croatian, and later on you'll be hearing my translation in English, hopefully right. Gospodine Boban, zdravi veseli bili, vrijeme za vaš pozdravni govor, izvolite. Srdačan pozdrav. Poštovane gospođe i gospodo, cijenjeni studionici konferencije OAE 2020. Zadovoljstvo mi je da vas mogu pozdraviti i zaželjeti vam online dobrodošlicu u Splitsko-Dalmatinsku županiju. Posebno srdačno pozdravljam ministra vlade Republike Hrvatske, profesora doktora Radovana Fuksa, rektora sveučilišta u Splitu, profesora doktora Dragana Ljutića, kao i dekanicu ekonomskog fakulteta sveučilišta u Splitu, profesoricu doktoricu Maju Fredotović. Naravno, gledonačnika Andru Pistulovića Oparu, hrvatske zastupnike ove u parlamentu i sve vas koji ste na bilo koji način uključeni u organizaciju i rad ove konferencije. Naposle želim pozdraviti generalnog predstavljena za istraživanje i inovacije Evropske komisije Jean-Pierre Pakea i sve svoje suratnike koji su bili angažirani u organizaciji ove konferencije. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed participants of the WIRE 2020 conference, it is a great pleasure to online greet and welcome you to the Spilda Mesha County. I would particularly like to welcome the Minister of Government of Republic of Croatia, Professor Radovan Fuchs, the Mayor of the City of Split, Mr. Andro Krstolovic Opara, Director of the University of Split, full Professor Dragan Ljutic, the Dean of the Faculty of Economics, Business and Tourism of the University of Split, full Professor Maja Fredotovic, the members of the EU Parliament for Croatia, and all of you who are in any way involved in the organization and running of this conference. In particular, I would like to welcome the Director General for Research and Innovation of the European Commission, Mr. Jean-Éric Paquet, and all of his associates who were involved in the organization of this conference. U svojom obraćanju prije svega želim ukazati da mi je žal da nam prilika nije da prilike nisu dopustile da se konferenca i fizički održi u našem gradu i našoj župani. Vjerojatno bi tada barem dio vremena odvojili za razgledanje 
prirodnih, kulturnih, povijetnih znamenitosti i zanimljivosti kojima obiluje ova sredina. Nadam se da će uskoro se ukazati takva prilika. A sada koristim prigodu ukazati nekoliko rečenica o temi kom se bavi ova konferencija iz perspektive naše županije. U prvom redu želim kazati da razvoj naše županije nastojimo usmjeriti u pravcu i na način na koje Evropska unija potiče i pomaže regije i regionalni razvoj. Naša županija u ovom smislu već je pokrepla nekoliko značajnih projekata o kojima će se vjerojatno govoriti u nastavku ove konferencije. Međutim, držim važnim ovom prigodu također istaknuti da je naša županija pripremljena i prihvatila sve oblike, sugestije i pomoći koja će Evropska unija i njene institucije generirati u budućnosti. In my address, I would first like to say that I'm sorry that the circumstances did not allow us to hold the conference physically in our city and our county, as probably at least some of the time would be devoted to visiting the natural, cultural and historical sites and attractions our area around us. I hope that such an opportunity will arise soon. Now I will use the occasion to say a few words on the topic of the conference from the perspective of our county. First of all, I would like to say that we are trying to direct the development of our county to follow the path encouraged by the European Union that helps regions and their developments. In this sense, our county has already launched several significant projects, which will probably be discussed in more detail at the conference. However, I consider it important to also point out on this occasion that our county is willing to accept all types of suggestions and assistance that European Union and its institutions will generate in the future. Ovo prigodom ističem naša cvjetljivu pomoć s centrima izvrsnosti koje okupljaju oko tisuću učenika i više od stotinu mentora iz takozvane STEM područja. Značajno držimo i našu podršku programu ICT župa, te značajnu financijsku podporu konferencijama i skupojima Among a number of specific projects launched by the county, I would like to take this opportunity to highlight our comprehensive assistance to the Centers of Excellence, which bring together about a thousand students and more than a hundred mentors from the STEM areas, and our support for the ICT County program, which brings together young software developers. We also provide a significant financial support for conferences and gatherings aimed at faster and wider development of the local economy in modern technologies. Even as the mayor of Solin, I paid special attention to enterprising young innovators. The city of Solin bought the first smart bench of our fellow citizen, Ivan Mervoš. In the end of this short statement, I want to express the thanks to the Economic Faculty, our university, and the General Director for Research and Innovation of the European Union. Oni su i u postojećim uvjetima našli načina, makar i virtualno, okupiti eminentne stručnjake, raspravljati o temama od ušektive njenih regija i regionalnog razvoja. Želim vam učmešan rad i svako dobro. Hvala vam. Hvala vama. At the end of this short address, I would like to express my gratitude and praise the conference organizers, the Faculty of Economics, Business and Tourism of our University, and the Director General for Research and Innovation of the European Commission. Even in the current conditions, they found ways to gather eminent experts, even witchily, and discuss topics important for the future of the European Union from the perspective of its regions and regional development. I wish you a successful conference and all the best. Hvala najljepša župane na ovom kratkom govoru. Vjerujem da će biti prilika da dočekamo naše goste i uživo. It was a Croatian greet and thanks to the prefect. And now it is time for our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome and introduce the mayor of the city of Split, Mr. Andro Krstulović Opara. Zdravi bili, izvolite. Zdravi bili, dobro jutro, Frano. Welcome to Split. Thank you, Frano. Esteemed Minister, esteemed Director General, Mr. Paquet, thank you for your nice words addressed about our beauty in our city. Thank you for your lecture here, esteemed Head of the County, esteemed Rector, esteemed Dean. 
Dear participants of online conference week of innovation regions of Europe 2020, I'm honored and pleased to welcome you to the city of Split. As a mayor of the city that is stepping deep into the second millennium and it's yet and is yet young and open-minded for challenges, I assure you that you are in the right place. Our city has survived over a millennium because of its willingness to the change because of its willingness to innovate. How innovative the citizens of Osprit are is clearly witnessed by our ancient gem, the famous Diocletian palace built from third and fourth century. And it, in, uh, it is palace whose corridors became the streets and the heart of the city. The emperor, emperor's mausoleum became a cathedral inside of palace which the palace people have built their homes and houses. The palace became and still remains the heart of the core of the city, a living monument in which people have been living for 1,700 years. Thanks to citizens of the split, both the history and the present live have together in harmony and said in the modern terms, they live sustainably. This conference focus on various aspects of innovation, development and research at European year, uh, level. As far as that in concern, you are also in the right place. Many time on of global level creation, people were innovator and investors. We don't need to go far back in the history. There is the fastest pure electric GT hypercar in the world, concept one by Mata Rimac, but also the smart bench of our young innovator, Ivan Mervos. Very important to uh, say that uh, the green plan and the green Europe imply constant work of environmental protection in which our local authorities green in the city of Split pays special attention. Further on, the city of Split is the first creation city to join the European cities Green Cities program for the reconstruction and development. Thus, continuing, continuing the policy of developing environmentally friendly infrastructure, we want to become a green city. In order to reduce the traffic jams, promote a healthy lifestyle and reduce gas emissions, we also promote the use of bicycles and as an alternative public transport. Dear conference participant, the saying the knowledge is power has been quoted so many times. Investing in knowledge means investing in future innovators, drivers of development. Therefore, the city of Split regularly provides scholarship to talented Split students and athletes. Also, a public tender was published for a re reimbursement of the travel expenses for a broad, a broad study to student, study students from the Erasmus Plus study program. We believe that international study is the right way to get knowledge of other cultures, languages and experience. All these mentioned projects are, of course, just some of the activities that we carry out as a local authorities. Curiosity and uh, innovation remain an indispensable factor in the progress of Croatia and Europe. The benefits of the technological, technological progress must be reflected and integrated in all spheres of society of our civilization. I wish you all success of this conference. Thank you for your attention and I salute you with our old traditional local greetings. Dravi and Veselbili, stay healthy and thank you. Thank you, Mayor of the City of Split, Mr. Rado Kostolovic Opara, for lovely words at the end. Yeah, that's the way we greet each other when we wish all the wealth and happiness uh, to all of you. That's nice to see that you're still connecting with us and saying hello throughout the Europe. Um, welcome. We are not over yet. We have a special speech prepared for you by our director of the University of Split, uh, Professor Dragan Jutic, who will be speaking now live from this beautiful stage. Welcome, Professor. It's your time to greet the Europe and our uh, thank you very much indeed. What to say, dear ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, 
uh, minister, perfect, mayor, dean, and finally, director general, very warm welcome to Split, very warm welcome to our university campus and uh, the School of Economics, what we called Faculty of Economy. It's uh, really, uh, for me, nice moment uh, to be a part of this prestige conference uh, and I have to thank to Maya, our Dean of Economy, Professor Fred Otovic, to organize it. Okay, it's uh, uh, in this way, but I hope in the future there will be possibility for all of you, all partic participants, to come to Split and see what we uh, can uh, actually present to you all our possibilities of living, uh, our ancient uh, parts of our city, our Provence in, in our back and, and our islands as well. When we are talking about the uh, University of Split, we have to tell you that uh, University of Split is um, one of uh, Tom, top thousand universities and the School of uh, Economy is uh, the one of the best uh, schools of economy among 5% recognized worldwide. Uh, University of Split, uh, looking at um, uh, many ranking lists, are very well positioned and uh, what we uh, called uh, uh, very important is uh, connection with the society. There is also one of the recognize the world um, uh, ranking list uh, for uh, those purposes, what university is doing to society. And we are positioned at uh, 15 place. That means that uh, Split University is uh, very keen to help our society and local and the local uh, district as we heard earlier. There are many ways to help it. Uh, first way is to be recognized as a university city. And really, we are very well recognized, not only by the ranking list, but also by other universities. And uh, we received an award of European Committee as an um, alliance of maritime universities. We were invited by a few universities uh, from um, uh, abroad, uh, from Gdańsk, from Kiel, from Brest, from France, from Cadiz and University of Malta to join them. And we actually uh, are involved in the Maritime University Net and we received, as I told you, uh, our award for uh, uh, doing what uh, tomorrow European Diploma uh, offering our students, our professors, our employees to go to all those uh, universities I mentioned and uh, to move uh, not only by ourselves but also to receive a knowledge from different, different uh, local cities or universities. What else? Our university is also uh, trying to uh, teach our students in a dual way. What does it mean? Uh, theoretical and practical way. What we are doing? More than 300 uh, companies, uh, state offices, departments, court, hospitals are connected with our university as a base for teaching our students. Uh, in the other way, there uh, are possibility for our students, possible students, in uh, surroundings that uh, they can study not only in Split, but also in a um, uh, very well known old two cities nearby the Split. What does it mean? We actually disperse the possibility of studying to other parts of our district. First, uh, to nearby, uh, very nice, charming town of Makarska. Uh, surrounding by uh, a lot of uh, very well known hotels with very good connections with our island and we put in the old monastery there uh, a, a school of uh, hospitality and gastronomy 
And uh, nowadays, uh, this is uh, second year of starting with uh, uh, that uh, school. And uh, what does it mean? A possibility for all the students to participate and learn and study at uh, that school in, in that small town. On the other way, uh, looking to innovative connections with um, our uh, local society, uh, we also uh, tried to establish, and we established, uh, Mediterranean agriculture in uh, our old town, also seen nearby the split in our outback in, in, in Provence, what we called it. And uh, there is a lot of possibilities for our students to learn more, to study uh, how it looks like directly connected by the, uh, uh, with the soil. Uh, why we do that, actually? Uh, two years ago, uh, I was asked, what can university uh, do for the, our district? That was uh, the, uh, answer, uh, the question from the perf uh, prefect of our district, Mr. Boban. And uh, we were thinking what we can do for our society. And really, we did in these two years uh, those possibilities. Not only uh, for uh, studying, we also finished very nice building as a center for startup and, and innovation. And we are offering uh, that spaces to our citizen young uh, uh, young men and women who want to improve not only the living but uh, the innovation in our city. We actually fulfilled all the criteria and finished it by ourselves and offering that possibility uh, to our town, to our citizens, to young people, giving them a perspective for a future work. Uh, there will be a lot uh, things to say about our university, but I think um, it should be very strong relations, relationship between our district, our town, our university, our state. And uh, uh, many thanks to our Ministry of Science and Technology and Education for supporting us in those purposes, for supporting us in um, being a part of that maritime uh, net, which is recognized by many other universities trying to join us in that special maritime possibilities uh, uh, alliance. Thank you very much, uh, Maya, once again for uh, organizing this uh, prestige uh, conference. I hope you will be having a fruitful, uh, fruitful discussions uh, and uh, I hope you will be gaining uh, to your home, to your minds, very nice pictures and uh, discussions from our School of Economy, from our University of Split. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Professor. There was uh, Professor Jutic, Director of the University of Split, who greeted you now. And now, the last but not the least, the host is uh, our Dean from the Faculty of Economics, Business and Tourism from Split, Professor Fredotovic. A few words for our dear guests who just connected. Thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, for all those who were not with us uh, yesterday, uh, welcome to the Faculty of Economics, Business and Tourism of the University of Split. It's our great honor to be a host of this uh, wonderful and important conference. And maybe many of you are wondering, why them? Who is this faculty? What does it stand for? And why they organize the wire? As you might have already heard from the previous uh, speakers, uh, we are one of the faculties of the U uh, University of Split. And uh, as with many things that university has been pursuing, uh, we are proud to say that uh, we were the ones that initiated a lot of those things and that we are happy and proud to see that they are flourishing and growing. So uh, our motto is uh, navigate through challenges and we consider the wire as a challenge. Why? Because uh, what uh, Mr. Paquet has said and what we heard uh, and learned uh, of the previous fire in Romania, we are the perfect example 
of uh, what uh, the Europe uh, stands for and what the Europe wants uh, to pursue and how to grow and what to do. So, we are the second largest university and the Faculty of Economics uh, in Croatia, but we are in the middle of a rural area uh, surrounded by remote areas. Whatever we do, whatever we research, whatever we stand for, whatever we teach our students, we teach them and we try to implement our uh, research in a local and regional development. So we want to be resilient and I think uh, we have uh, reached a certain degree of resilience and, um, uh, and, and excellence and uh, making this conference happen in these uh, circumstances, I think we have proven that. So why us? Um, un uh, regardless or um, unlike all these uh, previous fire editions, uh, this is organized by academia, by the university. So what we want to tell you? We want to tell you that uh, maybe it is time to uh, look at all these problems with different perspective. Uh, we think that uh, academia is the agent that can connect all the players in the game and make this transition of uh, research and innovation into real life uh, more efficient, more possible. We want to, to see our people uh, staying, living good, uh, having a good standard uh, of living and uh, satisfaction of their living conditions. And we are seeing, we have been seeing that uh, wherever we go and we were, we, where we learn and uh, invest with them. So uh, we hope that our best practices uh, can be seen. Some of them uh, you saw yesterday, but also uh, we would like to, uh, you to all to um, uh, connect and uh, to network during this conference. Now we have uh, more uh, than uh, almost 700 people with us, with participants from uh, all over the world. And uh, most, uh, uh, most of our business community and uh, our ecosystem of this faculty and university are also there with us. They are entrepreneurs, uh, they are coming from uh, all over the world, uh, they are uh, pursuing student incubators, uh, star startups, and so on. So uh, we hope that uh, with this event, we also contributed to this uh, better connections and to better uh, networking and transfer of knowledge. And uh, also uh, what uh, we would like to see at the end of this conference is uh, some uh, uh, clear uh, directions and some clear uh, definitions of what we as Europe uh, will do to foster the in, uh, investments, uh, innovation, research, especially for, uh, in regarding the remote, uh, remote areas. So I challenge you, welcome and have a good conference. Thank you so much, the Dean of Faculty, our host, place to be for this VIRE 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, the opening speeches are over, so I would like to especially thank Mr. Fuchs, Mr. Paquet, Boban, Kristolovic, Opara, Rektor Ljutic, and Mr. Fedotovic for being with us at this opening section. We carry on with our program because we found a perfect lady who will tell you great things as our keynote speaker. Why? Because the new era for research and innovation starts. Which opportunities for less developed regions arise? We ask our dear friend, una ragazza brava dell'Italia, per voi signore e signori, Roberta Capello. Ciao, ciao. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Nice to see you, Roberta. Hope you're ready for your keynote speech. We can't wait to I'm hear ready. all of you prepared, so I'll be leaving this stage, okay. and the stage or the video is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May I have the, the, the slides on, please? In the meantime, I would like to thank uh, the University of Split, the European Commission, and uh, all organizers for inviting me to uh, this um, uh, com conference. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, I be in a split, uh, uh, which I know and I would have liked to be back once again. Uh, in any case, we can uh, discuss at least what we would like to discuss among us, and this is a, a very important aspect. I am pleased to be here for two reasons. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, the topics are extremely important. Uh, our future as European lies on the capacity of all of us uh, united uh, to 
uh, exploit the opportunities given by innovation, given, given by the technological revolutions that are taking place. We are united, but we have to exploit our diversity. That's the main message I would like to. So the diversity is a strength that should be carried out, that should be used and uh, uh, exploited for that. The second reason uh, is that as also Professor Fredo, Fred, Fredotevich, uh, uh, my friend uh, Maya uh, uh, said, is that uh, we as academicians can bring a particular, let's say, perspective into the debate by trying to let's say, try to stylize the, what is happening and translate into the real world uh, and what is happening in reality, our, through scientific and sound methods, our um, theoretical uh, suggestions. So they have to be used, theory has to be used in order to help the real world to go on. In fact, what I'm going to tell you comes from uh, two major uh, European projects that were developed uh, by my group uh, at the Polytechnic of Milano together with other universities uh, in Europe. In, uh, and these were financed by institutions and uh, like uh, DG Regio, like uh, uh, SPON, that call for specific replies to uh, 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 clear uh, questions. I'll try to move on. I, if I am, I speak about technology, let us see if I manage. Yeah, I manage. So the aim of the presentation is to uh, bring, uh, to refresh a little bit about the debate we had over the last 10 years about what we should do in order for Europe to become more competitive in terms of its innovation capacity uh, and uh, especially what we uh, can do or we have to do in front of this new uh, fourth technological revolution that we are speaking about and that also the European, uh, com uh, European Commission communication is speaking about. Uh, so what can we do with these new uh, challenges and especially what can we do for what I call the less developed regions, but I could have called them more, more specifically, less technologically intensive regions. Uh, uh, and this is uh, what I call div divergence, uh, di diversity, sorry, not diver di diversity. So we uh, start by saying that 10 years ago, we were dealing with an R&D gap in Europe. Uh, and we all know that uh, if we look at Europe vis-a-vis -vis other major advanced countries, we see that the increase in GDP, and this is Europe, uh, uh, you see that there, the increase in 10 years has been nothing compared to the other developed countries and even compared to China, uh, an emerging country, even if the, of course, starting from lower levels, the, the, the increase is uh, easier. But in any case, uh, Europe was lagging behind in terms of GDP gap. Um, if we looked at that time into the date, dates of that, uh, the, the data at that time, we see even that two major countries uh, Germany and the United Kingdom, belonging to the EU at that time, um, were even decreasing their R&D over GDP uh, uh, ratio. And these, are, these were signs of extreme uh, weakness for the point of view uh, of our uh, continent. So the recommendations starting from the Lisbon Agenda and going on throughout the all the decay where please increase the GDP. So the strong recommendation was increase R&D over GDP. And this is again something that is mentioned in the European Commission communication of 2020. Despite these recommendations, uh, at the end of, the, of that century, so at the beginning of 2010, the 
um, ratio was still very low and far from the target that were what was given as 3% uh, of GDP over uh, uh, investments over, over GDP, uh, R&D investments over GDP. And if we looked at that time, the situation at the national level, we could see that only Finland and Sweden had already reached that target. The others were lagging behind. And if we look at the regional level, the situation is even more complicated and was even more drastic. We have a, only a few, the ones that are very red in the maps, these are the regions that achieve the 3%. And in numbers, it's only 11, or, 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 which doesn't say much, but in also in terms of GDP, it's a very, very low. It's less than 30% of the regions in terms of GDP as, as their weights that are able to be there. The others, and what the most important message from this uh, map is that most remote areas are very, very far from that target and are mu much are less than 0.5% in terms of uh, R&D over GDP. So, the point is, what could, can we do or could we do 10 years ago in front of that? And we did a lot, uh, but probably not enough. Uh, we started some uh, with some suggestions that, from my point of view, are still valid today. Uh, and I will tell you why uh, when we come to the present situation. So, first of all, uh, we understood and we have to be to, to have very clear in our mind that R&D investments are not the only way in which you can innovate, a region can innovate. I was extremely pleased to hear that uh, Mr. Paquet saying that regions can play an important role in Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, and, uh, and I am absolutely convinced of that because of their richness in diversity. But we have to understand this diversity and to uh, make it become a strength rather than a weakness. Uh, so many, many regions do not innovate through R&D uh, uh, activities. So what we, and this is where academicians can help, we have to understand what was called especially by Mr. Paquet again, but this is something that is in the literature, the innovation, innovative ecosystems. Uh, but what are these? Uh, how can we pick them up? And here is where we can give a little bit of an answer, or, or at least try to understand how uh, the real world, world works. First of all, we have to separate out research, which is the invention process, from innovation, which is the adoption process. Uh, these are two important pieces uh, to arrive to an innovation, but they don't necessarily collapse one, in one, one another. Uh, so let me give you an idea. If you are Region I eh, and you are a major or, or a, a policymaker in Region I, and you are so lucky that you have a lot of functions that like it, you have universities, you have R&D laboratories, so you have in your region the sources that create knowledge, uh, invention, that invent, create new knowledge, then you are expected uh, to have both basic innovation, uh, inventions or new knowledge, basic knowledge and specific applied knowledge. Then, if in your region you have entrepreneurship and you have the capacity to spread knowledge outside a single firm and becomes what we call, in theory, collective learning, but it means that what a, re a firm can do in that region is something that also another firm can do. So they share, even if not voluntary, uh, uh, their knowledge. Uh, then the knowledge in the area becomes innovation. And then we can have all feedbacks that we can invent. And we can also say, which is something very important, that the knowledge acquired inside can be fed by other knowledge coming from other 
uh, regions uh, because we are in a connected world and this is where Horizon Europe uh, plays an important role. It makes people be connected among uh, countries and among regions. And with the help of uh, statistical methodologies that are you, you they are very boring eh, for you, uh, we found out that there are two types of these regions in Europe. What we call the European science-based regions. This is where regions have all these characteristics that I told you, but especially the basic knowledge. They produce basic knowledge in general purpose technologies. They elaborate and invent new knowledge in general purpose technologies. And then we have another group way of regions where all the same happens, but with specific applied knowledge. So they are more specialized and more able to create specific applied knowledge. But this is one situation. But then you can be a region where you lack university, you lack R and uh, you you don't have R and D laboratories. Eh? You have some knowledge which comes from your small uh, you, you firms, tissue for, for uh, manufacturing tissue, for productive tissue. So you know something, but so you have entrepreneurship. You have a certain kind of collective learning, but you miss the most important sources of new knowledge. What you have is creativity. If you have creativity, which was mentioned, if you have talents, which were mentioned again, you can go outside and look for knowledge uh, uh, outside your region and bring in this knowledge into your region and apply it to, to your own purposes, to your own problems, and you in, innovate. In a, a, you pr produce a radical innovation. Uh, just to mention a situation like that is Emilia Romagna, where we have uh, Ferrari in Italy, where we have Ferrari, we have uh, a very important manufacturing uh, uh, okay. firms, but at the, Euro, at the regional level, knowledge comes from outside. And this is again in Europe, we can have two types of regions and regions where this knowledge that is brought in comes from, it's embedded in technology, new technology is embedded in something. So it's a formal knowledge as it called. But it can also be the case. And again, we have many examples where entrepreneurs go outside, meet uh, and do something to learn and come back with an informal knowledge. They learn from, out, from other uh, best practices how to do. Then again, we have a situation where in Europe, we don't have even uh, uh, entrepreneurs, we don't have collective learning, we don't have uh, productive activities, but we have product and process innovation because they, these regions imitate innovation and not knowledge. They bring into their uh, region uh, new uh, innovation, which can be a process innovation or a product innovation, but this is brought into their region. Most of the cases is brought by multinationals uh, that come into the regions and bring the innovativeness with them. And here we have again what we call an imitative innovation area or uh, what we call in a diplomatic way, a potential imitative innovation area. These are regions where even this kind of imitation is potentially there but doesn't take place. Then we have here our what we call, we called uh, patterns of innovation, we can call uh, innovative ecosystems, but this is the map of Europe. And this is where different processes, innovation processes, ways of innovations, ecosystems as you, as eco innovation system, as you want, want to call it, apply. Uh, and you can see um, that these are extremely uh, differentiated. Europe is diversified uh, uh, in terms of uh, these types of, but then how, what, what can we do in front of this di diversification? Should we try, as with the Lisbon agenda, to push all regions 
to become uh, a, a regions where R&D is developed. This is something that was made in Sicily with the Silicon Valley, uh, which is called the Catania Valley, uh, where we put a lot of uh, R&D activities uh, 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 and also because of the of a pleasant uh, atmosphere. This is where many um, R&D laboratories were uh, located, thanks also to the incentives given by the state. But the problem is that these laboratories and these activities did not have any spillover in terms of growth uh, and um, growth opportunities for Sicily in itself. Uh, so that was something that... So the point here is, is it so bad that we have these types of things? And then we, again, with some uh, econometrics, it not, doesn't matter how we did, but look at here, we put R&D expenditure, we controlled for many other things, and we said, okay, if we put a, 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 if we uh, increase the investments in R&D, what happens to innovation? And then this number is positive and with the star, which means that it is statistically significant, which means that there is a connection. So if you increase R&D expenditures in Europe as a whole, you get more innovation. Uh, again, this comes from an econometric model, so controlled for, for controlling for the richness of the country, of the regions and the uh, human capital, whatever is necessary to be controlled for. If we split the same linkage, not on average, but for our, let's say, at least five uh, activities, what we find is that the European CBN science-based area has a lot of uh, effect on innovation. So if you spend R&D in European science-based area, then you get a lot of innovation. Uh, this is the same for the applied science areas. But if we move on, uh, you see that even for the last two, for example, let's let's speak about the imitative innovation area, the uh, sign is significant and negative, which means that if we put R&D expenditures in the imitative innovation area, the case of Sicily, innovation drops. Why that? Because you destroy the eco-innovation system that is there. So they don't and they don't do, do anything uh, out of R&D. So the policy lesson is that R&D has not always been a, posit a positive effect uh, on innovation. What about GDP? So let's do the same ex exercise, R&D and uh, in this case, uh, GDP. The, in Europe, we have a positive and extremely uh, significant relationship. Uh, but if we split again, this is something that holds apart from the imitative innovation area. If you give, and this is the case of Sicily again, you give a lot of R&D expenditures to Sicily uh, as the, the, the national, uh, our national state did, and GDP ne did not have any, let's say, effect, any positive effect. So the lesson here is that you probably need a critical mass of R&D to obtain an economic effect. So what are the policy or where, what were the policy lessons uh, that we achieved? It, it, these are in, uh, let's say, uh, similar to the, in line with the smart specialization uh, idea. But the, uh, we, what we claim is that for each type of ecosystem, eco-innovation system, you have to have a specific policy goal. Uh, for example, for the first two, you have to have a, you have to have a goal which is the maximum return to R&D investment. This is where you have to spend your R&D uh, uh, money. <laughs> then here. It's not a matter of R&D, it's a matter of having the maximum return from uh, cooperation in application. Uh, they have to become very, very active in uh, activities and relations. Again, this is something that can be easily done uh, with uh, the um, uh, Horizon uh, Europe. And then here, with the imitative innovation area, we have to have the maximum return on imitation. That's very important. 
but then uh, I lost the time I have, but in any case, I'm there in the sense that I want to tell you 10 years after, uh, again, we have a new challenge. And we have to be careful as European not to lose this chance. This chance is there for even for our um, less uh, technologically inventive regions. And I'll tell you why. This, first of all, what is this new challenge? Again, also in the document, in the communication of the European Commission to the Parliament and to all bodies, uh, these new uh, technologies are mentioned. But my impression is that they are mentioned a little bit in a too superficial way, if I, if I can say, because this is where the future of our societies, of our way of living, of our way of doing business lies. These are artificial intelligence, uh, uh, smart ro robots, uh, uh, and uh, sensors, uh, uh, G5. So there is a huge number of technologies that allow, when recombined together, they have they give rise to infinitive new and radical innovations. Why radical? Because they transform the way in which we uh, live, uh, entertain ourselves, do business, and so on and so forth. So it really it changes our lives. Uh, uh, as in this case, for example, uh, thanks to the technologies we have, uh, uh, the conference despite uh, the virus. But this is a, a very, very simple uh, example. But there are many others that come uh, to the attention. So again, the question is, what should we do now for Europe and especially for our less technologically intensive regions? Is there an opportunity? Well, again, the, the reply is yes. Uh, first of all, because I'm convinced, thanks to, to the research I did, but secondly, because we have to be optimistic in this period, because uh, we need optimism in this period. Um, the creation and the adoption of uh, new uh, 4.0 technologies, as I said, uh, are expected to, and already do, but they will more in the future, drive pervasive transformations in the economy and in society. Again, here, academicians can help in trying to sketch these uh, types of uh, taxonomy, to these types of uh, transformations and create a sort of, let's say, uh, 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 picture of what could happen. Well, first of all, we have transformation in industrial production processes. We all are aware of what is Industry 4.0. And what we speak about Industry 4.0, we speak about a, a, an industry, a, a factory, which is totally uh, robota, robotized and at the same time digitalized uh, and controlled from remote. Uh, so that's something that is already there and, and will take place a little more in the future. Then we can have the creation and delivery of new services, what we call servitization. So all phenomena that we are now, uh, Amazon, uh, Uber, uh, and all these big giant intermediate uh, com companies are, that create, they are intermediaries, digital intermediaries in the uh, creation of new services and develop. And again, they, there is a huge possibility for new businesses there. Opportunities for traditional activities that switch to business, uh, to digital business models, digital transmitter. And all these are ways to create new business models and new uh, value. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I have to move uh, to, to this. Okay, okay. Again, we, uh, what is impressive in this technological transformation is that the R&D costs for inventing new applications that can give you uh, that can give you superstar compensations drop. So it's no longer a matter of R&D uh, 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 expenditures uh, in order to 
achieve superstar compensations. Uh, uh, the famous garage inventors uh, are a reality. Uh, um, adoption can lead, as I said, to different types uh, that come here, and you can see them put in the map of Europe. So again, uh, this is the prevailing technological transformation taking place in uh, in Europe, the low tech, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, the first one, the first map I forgot is the capacity of our regions to not to adopt these innovate, these uh, technologies, but to invent them. And what is extremely interesting, given the fact that the cost of R&D drop substantially, we have looking yellow. These are what we call the Iceland of new islands of innovation. These are new regions that, despite they were not at all leaders in the third industrial revolution, so they were lagging behind in terms of innovation capacity in the third industrial revolution. In the fourth industrial revolution, they are leaders together with the technology leader regions. Uh, so something is happening and there are new opportunities. And look at that, there are also some in, um, in, uh, in uh, peripheral areas, in Portugal, in Spain, uh, in, our, in Italy, but also in the Eastern, in some in Eastern countries. So in remote areas that were, again, previously very, very uh, limited in their capacity to innovate. And this is uh, the um, we so we, we we tried to understand which were the conditions that made less uh, in technologically intensive regions uh, become an island of innovation. This is what is of interest, uh, and these are the ones that have higher creativity creativity with respect to the low tech. So going back to uh, uh, Mr. Fuchs and uh, claiming that uh, we have to full capacity of exploiting brains, uh, as, as he mentioned, I, I wrote it down because I really like that. Uh, it's exactly what is, comes out here. Uh, if you find a way to exploit talent, to exploit creativity, even if you are a less intensive, uh, te technology intensive region, you can jump, you can leapfrog uh, and you can come out of your situation. You, have, you need more entrepreneurship, eh? don't forget about that, and specialization in also in manufacturing activities. This is the map of where the other technological transformations uh, are present. They prevail in this uh, map, and I'll guide you through quickly. Um, first of all, what we call the servitization, so where these uh, phenomena of uh, uh, digital uh, intermediation uh, to sell services or products and so on is especially a, an urban phenomenon. Uh, and this is nothing uh, clear, nothing uh, strange. We have, interestingly enough, Industry 4.0, which is extremely concentrated. Uh, uh, Italy is uh, really uh, in a, uh, something because we had a strong national plan for Industry 4.0. And at last, a policy was effective, I have to say. So I was really pleased about the, the results from, you, uh, from uh, our country. And then we have, and this is what I wanted to say, digitalization of traditional service. This is where uh, regions really change their way of producing services through uh, traditional services, through the digitalization. And as you see, these are all peripheral or less developed regions. And this is where, uh, again, uh, a lot should be done uh, to promote this. Robotization of traditional manufacturing, not, a, not the smart factory, but at least the robotization of traditional manufacturing. And this is, again, something that takes place here. Uh, so uh, the policy recommendation, because I think I spoke too much, I lost uh, the, the time. So just to, to, to give some ideas for the round table uh, that follows. Uh, uh, according to me, again, uh, united in diversity, which means diversity has to be uh, highlighted. Uh, and uh, um, for do that, we have to, do, to have policy measures that should concentrate on supporting, especially lagger regions, 
in their possibility to become new Iceland of innovation. So again, talent, creativity, as I heard before, are the right policy uh, receipts uh, for this. Um, launch of training programs for professionals, and you can read them there. Uh, again, something that comes from the past, but has to be renovated in this case, uh, policies uh, necessarily have to be tailored to the technological transformation present in the region. So we don't need to have all regions in Europe be an industry 4.0 region. Uh, this would be again the same mistake that we did with R&D, with the Lisbon agenda, without looking at the diversity. Um, I would claim also that policies should guarantee at, that Eastern countries are, should not be left behind in this process. Uh, uh, they have all capacities and all potentials to follow the Western countries and to, let's say, to be at the same pace of the Western countries in this uh, pattern. Uh, again, education and training policy. So here, again, my friend Maya is very good uh, in claiming that the, 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 the faculties uh, have to take into account that, but in, in general, education and training policies are necessary actions to be undertaken. And I totally agree with the uh, digital education action plan that was suggested by, uh, and by the European Commission for uh, the next uh, uh, period. And last but not least, uh, a legislation for a coordinated European approach on the human and ethical implication of artificial intelligence. Eh? Because the effects, I wanted to be optimistic, so the positive effects are there. I also know that there are many negative effects, especially on the, in the job market uh, with this transformation that have to be uh, safeguarded. And again, uh, the digital, um, sing so the, 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 the new, dig the new the, sorry, the new Digital Service Act suggested by, by Ursula von der Leyen is something that is absolutely well uh, taken and well deserved. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry if I've been late <laughs> long. Thank you. Grazie mille, grazie mille Roberto. Thank you for the inspirational keynote speech for this conference. You said a few words that we have a round table now. You'll be staying with us. We carry on with the round table because the representatives at the round table have some uh, more stuff to do today. So it's my great pleasure to greet uh, gentlemen who will be joining us right now. Roberto will be back to you quite soon. Thanks one more time. I'm kindly uh, going to ask Mr. Jean-Éric Paquet, Director General for Research and Innovation, European Commission, to join us Marco Marcula, Vice President of the European Committee of the Regions, and uh, another guest from Croatia, Gospodin Hrvoje Mestric, Acting Director General of the Ministry of Science and Education, Republic of Croatia, to be joining us now for a short and brief round table, and then we'll carry on with some questions and answers. Monsieur Paquet, I know that you have a lot of business to do from 11 uh, till the end of the day, so I'm going to start with questions for you if you are prepared and ready to answer them as a part of this round table. The question is, of course, huh, well, can you tell me right now, at this moment, what is the role of RNI in the post-COVID-19 recovery period? That's a hard question, but something that needs to shine a light to the future. Monsieur Paquet, if you can hear me, I think you need to turn on your mic, unmute. It will be much easier yeah. because I cannot read I, French I or English from the lips, okay? <laughs> Please, carry I on. I do indeed, I do indeed. Thank you very much. Yes, um, I mean, research and innovation, I think, was uh, firstly uh, decisive in the response to uh, the pandemic. I very much uh, hope that we will continue to see progress uh, funded also by uh, research and innovation in Europe at national level or through Horizon 2020 on tests, on therapeutics, and of course also on vaccines. We have uh, invested very significantly in vaccine development also in Europe. It's sometimes less uh, noisy or visible than what is happening in other parts of the world, but there's a lot happening also in Europe. And I still very much expect that European vaccines will be amongst those which will help us uh, deal with the pandemic in the coming months. 
Now, beyond the pandemic itself, and so we will need to continue to invest into better preparedness for the future also, uh, it is um, uh, very, very visible and very important that research uh, and innovation uh, plays a, a central role in driving the green and uh, digital transformations in Europe. I mentioned it in, in my opening remarks. Uh, this is at the heart of the recovery and resilience uh, effort uh, ongoing right now uh, in Europe. Uh, leaders agreed on the recovery package um, uh, during the summer. This is now being uh, agreed also with the European Parliament and uh, as part also of the future EU budget. And in these discussions, uh, uh, it is um, well identified that research and innovation will provide uh, firstly knowledge, technology, but also space for experimentation and social innovation uh, to ensure that uh, we can uh, rebuild better uh, in a green and digital manner. We can also repair our societies, including by investing into their resilience, investing in better health systems. And that is going to be uh, a systemic transformation, which is, has always been, um, uh, of course, challenging, but will uh, be particularly challenging um, as we need to, to recover. And this is where um, solutions which are across sectors, uh, which are, I think, able to tackle the systemic complexity, need to come from research and innovation. That also means that... Uh, uh, the investments will be supported um, on the one hand by Horizon Europe. Uh, I spoke about the Horizon Europe missions earlier, so I'm not going to come back to them. But we will also invest uh, very significantly into into partnerships um, in the digital digital area, microelectronics, quantum computers, high performance computers, photonics, uh, but then also um, into industry. Um, into the bio industry uh, to ensure the, that, these, that this, with these partnerships, for example, in aviation or in the um, automotive sector, uh, driving uh, automated and sustainable uh, uh, cars, uh, we will uh, allow our industries to um, transform, uh, become a CO2 uh, neutral over time, but already make a big impact by 2030. So combining recovery resilience uh, and transformations is a tall order um, in Europe, but I think this is what citizens very much expect um, from uh, policymakers and uh, economic actors, and citizens want to be part of uh, setting and de developing uh, that agenda, and here again, uh, as I said, research and innovation should provide platforms for that engagement with citizens in missions, but then very much at local level, and I finish with that, this transformation agenda, this recovery agenda, is obviously and centrally even the agenda of uh, regions and cities. Uh, this needs to happen um, at local level in the diversity, which is our richness, as was now just noted. And uh, I, I therefore uh, hope that you will also be able during uh, the conference today to explore how uh, regions are part and can be part of this um, recovery and resilience effort. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. But there is another one also which you have to now emphasize. The European Commission has recently launched a new European research area communication. Can you tell us how the new era will support Europe's recovery and will promote innovations across Europe and especially in less developed areas? Do you have any idea how we maybe fasten it up? Yeah, I think the, 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 the rationale which I just described um, applies both to Horizon Europe, which is the central European instrument, uh, which allows to combine um, national efforts. Uh, the same rationale goes also for the European research area. When you do research and innovation, you traditionally, uh, you did it for productivity and competitiveness that remains uh, very, very relevant and extremely important. We, we need to be relevant and um, able to roll out and innovate um, uh, through our science. Uh, Europe is uh, an engineering uh, continent and Croatia is a great illustration of that uh, strength. And um, we need to translate the, the science and engineering um, uh, edge which Europe has then also into innovation and economic and social developments. 
And that is very much where the European Innovation Council um, drives a, a deep tech um, revolution where I, I expect that Europe will lead. It will lead because of that uh, culture, which is very visible in the European Research Area vision of the Commission, but I think shared by member states. For example, we are promoting the idea of um, industrial technology roadmaps to bring indeed um, the industrial uh, research um, and development capacity uh, with um, innovation um, uh, ecosystems and efforts at national and at local level. So that's one illustration where the European research area can, can make, can make a, a big impact. But, but more uh, strategically, the European research area is about these investments into excellence, including by reforming uh, research and innovation systems at all levels with smart specialization particularly at uh, regional level. So driving these investments, these reforms, uh, allowing results to feed into society and the economy. But all of that uh, requires a clear sense of direction. And this is also where um, uh, the vision of Maria Gabriel, the research commissioner and of the commission for the European research area is really uh, bringing a new dimension to this European research area. So beyond the traditional necessary focus on science, on research, on applied research, and on innovation systems, looking largely at, um, at improvements and productivity, the direction we are now giving to that overall effort in the European research area is to sustain Europe's transformation, uh, Europe's green transformation, and Europe's uh, digital transformation, connected deeply uh, to, of course, the recovery and resilience effort, which will be needed as we emerge from the pandemic. And having this very clear strategic direction, I think will help uh, um, actors in research and innovation to make uh, the right choices in terms of priorities. One priority obviously needs to be fundamental blue sky research to be nurtured much more uh, across national and regional system systems than is the case. I think this is a uh, uh, an investment into the future which is key but beyond that then also find the right priorities in investing into innovation and uh, applied research but then also and that i think is one of the ambitions of the new european research area then also to connect um, research and innovation policies outcomes as i said but also policies across public policies in government or at uh, regional level so in other words, you should not have um, a transport or energy policy in isolation from research efforts. I think within governments, you need a whole of government approach where you connect uh, uh, the climate um, framework and the need uh, of CO2 abatement, where you connect your, your digital transformation with the need to provide um, efficient energy, uh, renewable energy systems, and, um, and clean and uh, socially available mobility. So this is all uh, very systemic, and I very much hope also that the European Research Area gives the message that uh, research and innovation is available across a government, is available across a region, a city, a university, to help connect um, uh, public policies in, in this um, systemic effort to, to transform and create a better Europe. So that's uh, what the European Research Area I hope can uh, put to the fore, including during the YR11 conference. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this answer, and of course, thank you for all the support you gave us uh, to organize the WIRE 2020. Maybe it will be uh, an opportunity to meet you live in the future years, but that's the way it is nowadays. I heard that you have some obligations from 11. Uh, you may leave at any time you prefer. Uh, one more time, thank, thank you. you. Now I'll be asking your dear Facebook friend and Instagram follower because you type it on Twitter as well all the time. I greet now Helsinki. Hope this is right, my dear friend. Hey, Tervetloa, Helsinki. Nice to have you with us. Okay, uh, hello, uh, hello everyone, and uh, hello Sean, Eric. So we have a lot to do with the uh, European Committee of the Regions uh, and with the DGRTD as uh, well with the whole Commission and regions around uh, Europe. Uh, 
Can I ask you the first with... question for the start? If it's not a problem, yeah, then you good. can carry on. I think it's easy yeah. one for you because you know everything about it. Could you present the most relevant RDNI related reflections of the COVID-19 pandemic among the EU regions? Because that's the hot topic of the year. Yeah. yeah. Very good uh, question, and uh, let me uh, highlight on that, uh, uh, that actually the, uh, this crisis has given us a lot of time to think and to uh, kind of think where we are, where we want to focus, and what are the instruments. And on that, so my first uh, strong reaction is actually what uh, Jean-Éric Paquet just uh, talked about, the political strong focus by commissioners, by the whole European Commission, especially the uh, Commissioner Maria Gabriel, who is in charge of this research and uh, development innovation policy and education as well, so that uh, we should uh, strongly link the R&D uh, and innovation to uh, regional policy and that means that we need to mobilize us, me and the, we have around one million elected politicians on a local and regional level and we the committee of the region we are representing them as part of the official European decision-making process. All key policy documents are coming to us as well and we will then deliver to the Parliament and uh, the Council our opinions, official opinions. And on those, so uh, these issues are of very good, high quality relevance. And uh, as actually, as Maria Gabriela Commissioner stated during the uh, Research and uh, the, uh, Innovation Days uh, a month ago, a bit more than a month ago, in the end of September, so that uh, we need uh, ERA hubs, research and innovation, EU policy needs to focus on a regional basis as well. What was in today's openings already in several of those said that we need this place-based uh, innovation ecosystem. So ecosystem uh, in as a collaboration platform, as a mentality, entrepreneurial mentality, that is a mindset. And I think that this uh, COVID-19 has given us time to think about how to organize and especially how to use virtual uh, platform, virtual networking as an instrument on that. And this is something that uh, even my own city, I'm the chair of the board as for the the second largest city in Finland, par linked to the Helsinki, which is just next to us. And we, if we link that to that, what we show uh, several of the uh, European Research and Development Scoreboard uh, uh, maps uh, uh, presented by Professor Capello. So I'm very happy that I can actually take several of your key messages from there. I'm coming personally from this uh, region, which is according to the region sc regional scoreboard, we are the most innovative region in Europe and we want to share the results, lessons learned. And on that, so then the key here is if I just simplify uh, for all regions is now that uh, in research as well, universities, companies need to focus more on impact, especially on societal impact. Uh, we need to uh, get, get more, we need to get more out of research. Uh, we need to uh, focus more user-driven citizens and communities of practice uh, innovation processes. Uh, we need to uh, focus the use of this smart specialization, which has already been discussed today, the importance of that, because that helps us to focus on a few core policy areas. And it's not anymore the traditional clusters and triple helix, but it's instead of that, it's more the regional innovation ecosystems. And the key is to network the collaboration concept of those with the rest of Europe. So those who are the leaders, with those who are lacking behind and encourage this bottom up. And I think this is the key for every region, actually, as uh, Professor Capello as well stated. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is to build an 
ecosystem, not ego system. Sometimes people yep. <laughs> lose the, their minds and uh, reverse that, and then we have a problem, especially on the region's part. Uh, Mr. Uh, Markula, uh, there is also one question I have to carry on now at this round table, which is quite like this. Could you detect a different regional needs among the EU regions with special focus on less developed and um, remote regions, especially how to close the innovation divide? An important uh, question, and uh, maybe best to start on that, especially now after the COVID, when there is the, uh, the new uh, program period with new financing, starting EU financing, and when we all everywhere we get these recovery funds as well. So as Professor Capello stated, I wrote it down even here so that uh, uh, this, uh, this is like an, uh, the uh, new opportunities emerge and they cannot be missed. And that is for every region. And closing the innovation divide is exactly that, start your own a local process with your university, science university, applied sciences, uh, research centers, and local industry, large and small. Integrate that, so for this local mentality of uh, working, learning together, but then build that with the EU, with other uh, regions, so partnerships, using there your own cohesion funds, uh, uh, using the Interact program, using new horizon uh, research programs and all of that so can lead uh, us to this so that we open up our own thinking in a new way and this means as an example so that the that uh, we could say that regions are and uh, need, need to be created the new arenas as hotspots for innovation co-creation doing that together they can be whatever innovation gardens, uh, challenge platforms, using innovation camps and other where people together create their own uh, future. So it's inventing the future by using uh, strongly the, the knowledge, the scientific knowledge, but moving stronger uh, and faster to the know-how, how to do things, how to upskill your labor force, how to invest more in human capital in general, how to implement the lifelong learning policy throughout the whole school, school and university and adult education systems. Mm. How do you say kitos for now, right? Thank you for now. Yes, thank uh, it, you. It's a pleasure to see that Professor Capello has joined us now. We'll talk to you later on because there are a lot of questions you did. A great keynote speech but it's now time for me to present you the croatia uh, flag carrier for this round table and the gentleman who will be answering also questions so could you could hear what is in croatia national level uh, mr mestric could you present national perspective of the reflections of the covid 19 pandemic for the regional research and innovation ecosystem we are a small country which deals with pandemic in its own way, but uh, research is always something which we need to rely on for, for the future. So please let us hear. Hello to everybody, uh, director, the director general, dear professors. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting us, uh, Ministry of Science and Education. And I would i like to welcome uh, everyone here today with us. Um, uh, I have to apologize, Minister Radovan Fuchs, who has the government meeting today morning, so he could not join me personally. So uh, it is my great pleasure to be here with you uh, all to talk about this important topic. Um, I believe that only with the help of research and innovation, we can address the full spectrum of needs uh, resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, First and foremost, we need to fund and enable the development of vaccine against the virus, which I hope will happen soon. Uh, but further, research and innovation uh, can help develop solutions for uh, many professions uh, which are currently at the front line of dealing with crises, like uh, healthcare professionals and people working in services which are highly exposed and people whose jobs and uh, sectors are in danger. Uh, so in, 
In Croatia, we have an example of ERC grants for investigating Im immune response to viral pathogens and development of new vaccines coordinated by the Faculty of Medicine, University of Rijeka. This project grew into a National Center of Excellence uh, for uh, research in virus uh, immunology and vac vaccines. Uh, they are pooling national resources uh, with clinic infectious diseases in Zagreb, Dr. Fran Mihaljevic which is now at the forefront of national coronavirus battle, as well as other partners from Germany and Israel. This center has already developed platform vaccine vectors, which are enabling research aimed to develop new immunotherapic approaches targeting this virus. Uh, so ensuring, ensuring funds for expanding efforts of such and similar uh, collaboration should be our priority. When we... yeah. yeah, good to hear. Please carry on. Uh, here, so uh, uh, in Ministry of Science, it is important to find, uh, uh, we think that it is important to find additional resources for as well as finding ways to combine efforts and results from different sources uh, for financing we have uh, all around the Europe. That's uh, all. Uh, this should include options for more flexible use of structural funds, especially for demand, diagnosis, and other solutions for immediate response uh, to innovative challenges, which may come from many sides and can be answered only by research. As many other member states, Croatia fights with strict uh, DF regulations regulations and try to apply them to research sector, which is not always very efficient and uh, successful. So a research sector, in our opinion, should have plenty of research-oriented rules and use of structural funds uh, for research and innovation we plan to move in the next financial perspective. We have also prepared and launched the national call to Croatian Science Foundation for research proposals uh, on infectious diseases caused by coronaviruses and uh, all the social and educational and economical aspects of the pandemic, managed to fund and streams of research on new diagnostic approaches, epidemiology development, new vaccines, and treatment. Uh, once again, we call uh, for more coordinated efforts of DG RTD and DG Regia to provide us the clear guidelines for synergies for use the more more flexible use of European funds and other possibilities for redirecting funds to contribute to research and innovation against COVID. Uh, so. Uh, it is with the assistance of research and innovation we will be able to address the, the various issues at hand and find an answer to this health, um, economic and social crisis. Uh, and furthermore, we all agree that uh, short, medium and long-term research efforts related to COVID and potential future epi epidemics uh, should continue. Thank you, Mr. Mestrich. Croatian upload speed is sometimes a problem, but we understood most of it and the perspective is quite good. It's always nice to hear that, especially when I ask you to reflect and uh, present your understanding of the most promising actions for uh, synergies between different EU research and innovation policies or to support economic, social and territorial cohesion. How are we dealing with that? You said you have a lot of plans. Hopefully this one is a nice hand to take in this type of the year? Uh, so I strongly believe uh, that we need to further maximize the synergetic effects on different EU programs and instruments. Uh, as I already said, this is, a, for example, between Erasmus Plus and Horizon Europe, new uh, ERDF uh, in new financial perspective and Horizon, and also the new uh, resilient, recovery and resilience fund, which is also very important, as Mr. Peke said, uh, for the development of the of the research and science. Uh, but we all uh, we need to achieve this on the Europe 
on all European regional and national levels. Um, at the same time, we believe that a uh, huge effort has already been made on this topic during these years, and that there is a lot on, of uh, important activities, agendas and documents which should be all uh, uh, analyzed and assessed. And uh, I should mention that during the presidency of Croatia, together with other member states, we took a part in the creation of new a European research area narrative and supported the importance of links uh, between the education and research. Uh, so we think that work on the new ERA, European Research Area Communication, is, uh, is a move in the right direction uh, because this new era paradigm stresses the need to include education as part of the ERA policies. And this is where the regional universities like Split, uh, Rijeka and Osijek in Croatia and other universities which are regional, which where they come in place. Uh, uh, this is especially important uh, for, the, for the young researchers. So uh, it's idea that the, um, Europe has the open labor market, uh, but this, we have to encourage more free and balanced circulation of researchers. That means that we have uh, uh, more young researchers in uh, our regional universities and that more Croatian researchers can come to other uh, universities in, in uh, Europe uh, without the administrative and other barriers which are still uh, present right now. This should be the cornerstone uh, of way from the beginning. And uh, Complementary to this mobility of researchers, we uh, see the uh, shared and open research infrastructures as another area of collaboration. Uh, this will hopefully uh, come to the, uh, through the European Institute for Innovation Communities, where we should uh, stress more the uh, partition of the regions which are not uh, so, so highly innovative uh, and uh, which uh, these communities should uh, participate in should help uh, the uh, the lagging behind regions uh, in innovation sense to 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 uh, develop uh, more and take advantage of the call of of the being in Europe. Um, uh, also, I would like to mention the European universities. Uh, this is the key driver of the European education area which are the actually the test beds towards the universities of the future. European universities are a concrete example where the strongly interconnected aims of European education area and European research area could, could be brought together by enhancing mobility, fostering excellence in education and research, strengthening the links uh, between teaching, research and innovation, and also important service to the society, as well as the, by promoting uh, automatic recognition of qualifications uh, throughout the Europe. Uh, the idea, uh, idea of the European Innovation Council has a lot of merit, and we believe that it should all support all phases of the innovation cycle, including proof of concept, uh, and lastly, doctoral education as a third cycle of education uh, has always been the logical choice and natural place for cooperation between, uh, between education and uh, research, two pillars of knowledge-based society. And uh, I should say here that uh, Croatia will try to promote more research-based doctoral studies uh, and uh, uh, try to in, in, include more young re researchers scholarships, uh, scholarship schemes through the innovation system reforms. We plan to finance both by the Recovery and Resilience Fund and also by the, uh, by the European funds, uh, structural funds from the, but with accent on the STEM areas in order to support the digital uh, transition. Thank you, Mr. Meslich, for now. You know, when they ask me, Frano, could you be the moderator of the round table? I say, 
No, it's the first ever invented way of communication in the history of Earth. Because the keynote speaker wants to offer something and people are just asking themselves, when's the coffee break? When's the lunch break? When it's the networking time? We'll have it all now, but at this wire 2020, I have a lot of questions for all of you right now. Hope that you're prepared because what is a round table without Good questions from the participants of this conference. Uh, Professor Capello, you had a great keynote speech. A lot of questions are here for you. Can I start with the first one asked by Nikola Balic? Majority of innovation support action and concentrate in investing in infrastructure and easily forget to invest in people. This is especially an issue as a cycle of investment lack continuity and people easily follow the work elsewhere. What to do to alleviate this challenge? How to prevent brain drainage from small countries and remote regions? Uh, well, um, there are, there are, well it's, a, it's an important question. Uh, well, from my uh, impression is that uh, there, there should be incentives to keep uh, uh, in, in innovative people in their regions by, uh, uh, of course, incentivize uh, uh, activities, even their own activities uh, um, to, to, to be put in place. So, um, and to, especially to help the, also the, if there is any, it depends on what we are speaking about, because again, less developed regions are very differentiated. Uh, uh, there are areas where there, it's a matter of rurality, it's a matter of peripherality there, you cannot do uh, what I'm going to say, but if you are in areas which are less developed in terms of uh, a less efficient and less advanced uh, industrial tissues, then you can in invest in uh, the industrial reality which is there and use uh, uh, the brain drain from, uh, so calling back uh, good uh, people to start uh, this kind of modernization and so on. So these are all attempts that have probably also been done uh, in Italy we had and they, in some areas they worked. Uh, universities pro uh, used uh, a new um, uh, I would say new jobs and new uh, positions for Italian people, bright Italian people that did their career abroad and they try to call them back uh, in order to keep providing them uh, with specific positions and specific activities in all uh, countries. We have, for example, the, uh, the area in uh, Abruzzo, uh, which is a very remote, uh, one of the inner uh, region in Italy, it's on the, in the Apennines, in the centre, in the Apennines, in the southern part uh, of the Apennines, where uh, we created the, the, the GSSI, the um, Gran Sasso, which is the mountain which is there, the Gran Sasso Science Institute, and there a lot of people have been called back from U US and uh, where, and the, a new, let's say, very strong uh, reality, uh, scientific and innovative reality was uh, developed and it's extremely successful. It is strongly embedded in the local uh, industrial uh, tissue. So they study the problem of, of local areas, the, of the local area, they studied, so they had also the headquarters, the, it's L'Aquila, uh, it's where the, 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 the earthquake took place 10 years ago. And so they study these kinds of aspects. So we have physicians, very strong uh, physicians. We have also, uh, and this is, uh, they are quite uh, well paid. Uh, the people, the, the, uh, the researchers, they compare to the other uh, Italian positions. So in that case, it worked. Uh, and they measured, they managed to get people back and to keep the good people in the area. So that's, that's a gr great thing to emphasize. 
pay the people so they could live from it and enjoy the work they do. Great, great, great approach in Italy. Hopefully that we can do it in other regions as well. Mr. Makula, there is a one question for you as well. Could you address the key ingredients for efficient cross-border cooperation among regions with lacking R&D capacities? That's the question I got on the slider as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, let me just add that I've been to L'Aquila already 30 years ago and we had a very interesting small engineering brainstorming uh, meeting over the weekend. Lovely location. Uh, the, uh, to your uh, question, uh, I think first part of that definitely has to be that uh, we need more circular economy for knowledge. So knowledge sharing uh, and, and collaboration, co-creating. And this is for the cross-border collaboration as well. So because we can have a, a small groups, small communities in, in remote locations, uh, smaller cities, university, uh, with the university, but then let them to collaborate through the networking, what we have learned now during the COVID. So that it's uh, building this critical mass by having key people in different locations uh, in Europe or globally. And that is something that we should take strongly with the uh, DGRTD, so with the commission, how to organize this or with the Joint Research Center, how to organize this kind of what I can call the dance of research with practice, practice whatever, so local practice. And we could use inter interreg uh, financing, local regional cohesion funds and horizon. So create the mentality, the working methods that we are needed. So kind of distributed innovation camping system throughout Europe and put this as the symbol of European collaboration for uh, closing the innovation divide. We have the uh, EGTC, so European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation, so instrument even to make this an official uh, official organ, this kind of network of research location, place, small place-based uh, innovation ecosystems. Yep. Ah, nice. I enjoy when you say that you visited some parts of the world. L'Aquila is beautiful. Hopefully, we'll meet you both in Split quite soon or in other parts of Croatia. Mr. Mestric, there is also one question for you. Of course, shortly, we have part of the sessions that awaits us. Uh, from your extensive experience in innovation of the ecosystems, what can we expect as the first action in your new role to support the technology transfer and innovation from and at universities? So thank you very much for the question. Uh, so the the the, uh, the first action is as always uh, uh, the resol resolution of the problems and uh, situations we have uh, in the in the in the divide between academia and business here in Croatia. But I think this is the uh, uh, this is the same the problem in the many, many European regions, except. Uh, we have also the, here the possibility to learn more from the more uh, from the more innovative uh, regions uh, in Europe. So uh, I believe we will try to uh, use the uh, the, the new uh, financing uh, perspective and the new uh, uh, recovery and resilience fund just to help uh, universities to transform themselves and to be more advanced in the in the in the um, fulfilling their mission to uh, work more towards the economy and uh, and uh, and produce more uh, disrupt innovation and we, which can be really uh, transformed uh, to the to the products and, and processes and, and to new markets and for this we really we, we in Croatia really need to to change the paradigm of financing the universities uh, of the governing of the universities and to make them more focused to the to, uh, to the to their uh, goal and uh, which is really make the impact to the society to the economy and their their role as the intellectual and uh, innovative leader in the in the regions this is why we invested a lot uh, in, in the previous time in the regional universities like split and rieka and osik and i i hope now it's time really to 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 use this crisis as the as the changing of the paradigm to, 
to 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 um, to, to, to stress the role of the of the innovation uh, uh, results and uh, of the of the research and the education which is now uh, which is now uh, performed at our university. Well, the worst thing about being a host is that sometimes you have to say we are out of time, and that's about it. We have a short break before the public sessions. I would like to say, of course, grazie, Roberta, Kitos, Marco, Hvala, Hrvoje, for being with us now. Other questions may be asked. I ask you if you have time, join us in the evening. Uh, we have actually a special combination of heritage and innovation uh, official party, little party, where you can do some networking and maybe some other things you want to emphasize can be checked between the persons who would really love to talk to you in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a short, short, short coffee break. I don't drink coffee, so for me, it should be like this. You carry on with the parallel sessions. Remember, <laughs> you already applied for the parallel sessions, so yours will be open and hope that you will enjoy and more than 50 great speakers who will be uh, with you throughout the day. Later on, of course, we have a special night out from your living room, so join us. And hopefully that you will have a beautiful day. If you have any more comments and questions, please join us at our official apps and then we can do it all together throughout the entry or chat or the Slido application. That's about it. Take a short break and carry on with some knowledge because Wire 2020 carries on online. That's about it. See you in a few minutes, uh, especially if you like parallel session. And that's good for networking because knowledge and networking goes perfectly with a glass of wine, Croatian wine, but I think we cannot deliver it to you quite soon. See you.